Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. The I need to turn on RCS now because I am losing control of this airplane. This is the giant airplane that I am building to carry a Saturn V rocket, a scale model of a Saturn V rocket, into space. This is the seventh or eighth test flight that we're in right now, which is the first time that I've actually attempted to go into space, and it turns out we will definitely go into space. Let's see what our monoprop usage is like. Uh, we go through it, well, when we're burning in in two axes, two axes at once, we use about four per second, which uh, means 80 is not very much, meaning I might actually add more monoprop to it. Not sure at this point, but in any case, uh, might also add a reaction wheel, uh, one of the reaction wheels part of the Mark IV system might add that because also solar panels we were definitely gonna need some sort of solar thing because we are just about out and yeah so that's an improvement to make it also can it also carries a lot more oxidizer than it actually uses it also of course doesn't quite get into orbit actually I think it would get into orbit if I flew it properly the problem is I did not fly it properly and I'm actually gonna just time warp for a brief moment to uh, kind of lock us in our position and so now we're going to do a uh, re-entry test sub and subsequent landing test since it turns out we're going to... Well, actually, we're going to end up probably possibly landing on this closer island. I don't know. If we come down over land, I will attempt a landing. If we do not, I will not. Uh, since we're in space, I might as well show you that the Saturn V rocket does indeed fit inside the cargo bay. Here it is. We took it almost into orbit. And it is fully fueled, so there is a lot of dead weight here that we're carrying around. So that tells you how close I am to finishing this. Surprisingly, uh, looks like it wasn't gonna. It's not gonna be too hard because there isn't much left to do. I just gotta take out some of this excess oxidizer in here, and possibly add a little bit more monoprop. Possibly add a reaction wheel. Add some solar panels. And the plane is just about done with those features. Oh, I also need to add an action group to close intakes, because right now there is no action group for that. And that helps during the scent. It doesn't help much, because by the time you actually need that, it's kind of too late. But it does help a little bit. And so, it's definitely a feature I would like to add. Anyhow, the first video I did was, of course, kind of just giving you a quick little overview and kind of going, I'm doing this thing. This second video, uh, well, the second video was actually a short little clip I posted last night. That was just because I... Oh, this actually has more monoprop on it than it normally would because of in uh, the Saturn V's monoprop, and it's actually using the Saturn V's uh, mono thrusters as well, which it, you know, it shouldn't be. For, I mean, for us to actually tell how much is being used, that's, that's not right. But, yes trying to rotate it slowly, trying to kind of line us up with the airstream. And we're actually, we're coming down over this land. Uh, actually, we might make it to the next bit of land. I forgot that we're coming down in a steeper re-entry path than I usually come down in, so we're actually going farther than I'm used to. I'm going to go ahead and close the cargo bay at this point, because there's no point in having it open. And we're going to try and land this sucker. In the dark. Unfortunately, in the dark. I mean, it, it's it's. I, I know it's easier to see on the video when it's during the daytime, but we came down at night. Therefore, we will land at night. Let's see if the action group works as it's supposed to. There we go. I've disabled half of the engines, and we're now our nose is starting to fall, and we have run out of monoprop. So I will close that, and time for reentry effects. Oh boy, that's fun. Let's see what this looks like from the cockpit. Yeah, you can see little bits of flame coming by the windows as we go down. No one in the, uh, actually there is no crew cargo section. There is no crew section, I should say. Crew cargo, yeah. There's no crew section on this plane. This is a cargo plane. That is what it is supposed to do. A cargo space plane, of course. Do these landing gear have lights on them? I actually don't know if they do. So let's see. Do-do-do. I don't see a thing for it, so I would assume that they do not have lights. That's another thing. I might want to add... I might want to add, like, just a single landing light up front. Well, actually, two landing lights up front on this little section here. I might do that. Maybe, uh, maybe install the aviation lights mod and give this thing some aviation lights. That might be cool. 
Of course, we do have no fuel left. Never mind. I was going to say, of course, we do have fuel left, meaning we can fire up our engines to change where we're going. But uh, we do not actually have any fuel left, and I forgot to think about that. And that is definitely a major problem, because we burned it all in space. And, well, trying to get to space. And this plane cannot glide in for a landing, because... Well, actually, it might be able to with... Um, it might be able to with a cargo in it. Because basically the problem with it gliding in is that with no cargo, the center of mass is farther in front of the center of lift than it normally would be. In fact, I also could possibly uh, help this situation by moving oxidizer from the front of the craft into the back of the craft. I could actually assist. Oops, I tried to move in liquid fuel, which there is none, so that that, that definitely helped. But yes, if I move in the oxidizer from the front to the back, that should move our center of mass backwards a bit. And that will hopefully assist us in being able to pull up. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to pull up enough to actually survive this, but, you know, it's worth a try. Definitely worth a try. Alright, at this point, it looks like we're not going to make any kind of land except for the land that we're over right now. Which is a major problem because that means we're going to have to turn around to try to land there. And let's see, that one's pumped, that one's not. That one's not, I missed one. Okay, so we'll move it in here. It was this one, was it? I don't know, I'll, I'll kind of start from the front and go backwards to figure out which one I need to. Okay, because the front one is completely empty, the second one is fine, the third one, yeah, the fourth. Fourth is where we were at. Alright. And let's see. Oh, I just I just started it and then immediately stopped it cuz I clicked somewhere else. That's nice. Okay. Oh, now I've just opened 3 of them. Come on. It was this one, right? Nope, it was this one. Ah, fun. All right. So I believe this is the most backwards we can move all the oxidizer because everywhere else is already full of it. So this is the best we can do. As you can see, we are managing to pull above the horizon. However, our speed is very low, and the direction in which we're falling is much lower than is much lower than we're actually aimed at, which is which is a bad thing. That is not a good way to glide. In fact, it's not. Uh, no, it's gliding. I'm just being dumb about words. All right. So we have a small chance. We have a very small chance. We're, we're pretty much doomed at this point, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to turn around and go land at that island. Ooh, this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. We're basically dropping out of the sky. I don't. I, I, I actually really love the way this looks right now because you can actually see just how fast we're dropping. You can actually see it. And... Unfortunately, I think our vertical speed is is high enough to where we will not survive. I'm not sure though. I'm going to just pull up. I'm going to optimistically put the gear down and turn on the brakes, which is going to do nothing except slow us down more, which actually is a good thing at this point because we want to try and stay alive when we hit the ground. And here here goes. Just we're going to can't make it to the land. We're going to ditch it in the ocean. 50 meters per second. It's a bit too fast. Ooh, yep, like I said, a bit too fast if for everything except the intakes and... Actually, most of the fuselage was fine. It was the uh, cockpit that really couldn't take it. Which, which is unfortunate because that's the part that is most important. But anyhow, let's go back to design. Okay, so the first thing that I said we needed to do was add more monoprop. I'm not going to worry about that right now. First, I'm going to worry about how many of these tanks were full of oxidizer? Like, a bunch. I remember that much. Unfortunately, that's not a very accurate number. But let's just take the oxidizer out of this one. And this one. And this one. And that one. Let's see, how many was that? One, two, three, four. Let's take it out of a fifth one and see if that's better. Well, it'll be better. I don't know if it'll be what we need. We also need to add an action group to toggle intakes. 
And perhaps we should add a reserve fuel tank with like emergency fuel. Well, that's something kind of a polish thing after after we get it working. That's the kind of thing we would add. Right now, I think we just need to focus on just getting something to toggle all the... Oh, well, this, this contains intake air, but it doesn't actually have an intake, which is interesting. Or at least it doesn't have a toggle for the intake. I'll have to look at that closer when we are actually on the runway. But for now, toggle these, toggle these, toggle these. All right, so we got our action group. We have reduced our amount of oxidizer on board. And now we need to just add some monoprop. There should be some... Mm, let's, let's open this real fast and take a look at how our clearance is there. Because we don't have much space. Oh, we do have space along the sides, however. So I can add some small monoprop tape monoprop tanks on the sides here. Of course, I have to find... There it is. I have to find the monoprop first, but I believe we should be able to just insert some, like, right here. Does that look alright? Yeah, it doesn't stick out or anything. Alright, that I think that'll work. I think that'll work just fine. Let's put it right about there. And then let's look at what this looks like when it's open. So we can see that it's not like glitching or anything. Yeah, that looks all right. That looks all right. So let's close that back. How much monoprop is in each one of these? 150. Let's stick another set on here. And we'll just have some spare monoprop on the side here. That'll be nice. There we go. That should, yep, yeah, that still has clearance. So we technically could roll something in here and roll it back out, which I definitely want to do at some point with other stuff. And we can definitely, yeah, we can do that. All right. This is looking great. Uh, another thing, <laughs> look at our center of mass and center of lift. Oh, our center of mass is just barely in front. That's actually all right, though. I said I wanted to add some lights. So let's go find the lights where, where, wherever exactly they're hidden. There we go. Illuminators Mark II. Oops. And we want to kind of just inset them in here. Oops, wrong way. No, 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 no. Hmm. They're going to be a little bit difficult here. Hold on. Let's try placing them with the angle snap. Okay. So let's see how that looks terrible. Okay, let's go back to the other kind of angle snap, or the lack of angle snap, I should say. You know what? Maybe maybe if we place them instead of on that angle piece, we put them above it, but like embedded into it. So let's try, oops, let's try this. Yeah, see, that looks good. I think that looks good. Yeah. Now, of course, to see what it actually looks like on the runway, we need to go launch. But yeah, this is this is this is what I've been working on. Very nice. Or at least I think it's very nice. It also I forget if I mentioned this or not, but this is using the docking nose cone. So we have our little docking port up front. Of course, uh, later on I'm gonna add lighting to the bay and the docking port or three or six in the bay. I don't know how many, that's why I said three or six. Of course that can always be modified later. And that's, that's where we will have those. There's RCS ports. You see, you see there's two little ports on the sides here at the front. And then there's two at the back here. And then there's two, well, four in the middle. Two on the top, two on the bottom, right there. So you can see we have a fairly nice little RCS setup. Could could use a bit more, but I think, I think this is all right, honestly. Let's see, what else do I need to do? I did want to put some canards on the front of the thing. Of course, our center of lift is already dangerously close to the center of mass with this payload, and I might not want to actually do this. But then again, maybe I do. Maybe I do. We'll take a look at it. Nothing else. I think that looks alright. I don't know. It's, it's really a matter of opinion. But I think I will go ahead and have this up here. Let me just change exactly where I'm going to put it. I'm going to kind of put it over this cable to kind of hide it a little. Clever. Or so I thought. There we go. And we want these to only activate for pitch because that's what they're there for. 
and they don't intersect on the inside that's good and ooh, never mind about the placement on the exact placement see i always hate when you have control surfaces that glitch that glitch into other things while you're you know using them i i just always have hated that and so i try to always place them somewhere where they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to glitch into something else that's um that's actually a problem that I'm trying not to think about because I just remembered that that this plane actually already has that problem in one spot. In fact, I think I'm going to undo what I just did because the plane already has that problem somewhere. I'm just going to give up and let it have that problem in two places. Oh, what? And now they're gone entirely. What the hell? The uh, undo feature just kind of glitched out and broke, which is unfortunate. Maybe if we just add these... There you go, that way I can satisfy my need for these not to glitch through other parts. Try putting them like that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see, how does that do our mass and lift? Ah, oh, that's... See, now it's pushing slightly ahead. So let's, let's fill the foremost with oxidizer, right? And then take out the one on the farthest on the rear. Remove it of oxidizer. See, that moves our center of mass forward a bit. I think that'll be alright. The thing is, I don't want to move it too much more forward either, because when it's empty, there's a difference. I think I think we can go ahead and fill one more up here, and take out one more back here. In fact, I need to check, is this 110? Oh, that's 55, so actually let's take out another one back here. Alright, I think we're good to go, other than I need to close this again. Come on. Close. There we go. All right, I think I think this is good. Time for another test flight, of course. Oh, and I need to save it, of course. <sighs> test, test. Hello, hello, and welcome to.